You know what they say, it's hard to get to the top, but it's even harder to stay there. You know, there have been a lot of YouTubers who have come and gone over the years, and it seems like every big channel has their own story. Some channels just blow up out of nowhere, but then they die just as fast as they grew. Whereas there's other channels that have grown for years and years, who have maybe been able to sustain their growth or fizzle out over time. Today I wanted to talk about how to kill a YouTube channel, and we're gonna go through a lot of examples of major YouTubers. Uh, I'm not really trying to pick on these YouTubers or criticize them in any way, I just want to take a look into what went wrong for most of these channels. So when I made a video talking about how to start a YouTube channel, something I mentioned is that when you first start your channel, I mentioned that there are two major things that you need to think about when coming up with an idea for a channel. One, is this a type of content where I will be able to come up with new video ideas constantly and never run out? And two, is this the kind of content where I really enjoy making it and that I'm not going to get burnt out over time? So let's talk about the first point. When starting a new channel, I would really suggest that you write down maybe five to ten video ideas before you even get started. Because you don't want to just like have that one video that you really want to do, and then you do that video, and then you don't know what to do after that, and then you just kind of disappear after that. So one major way that people have killed their channels is they just run out of ideas. This is why you have a lot of channels that really stick to like series type videos. You know, for example, a lot of YouTubers right now are doing like uh, Reddit videos, and so that kind of content is really easy to make, you know? It's just, all right, I need to make a video. I'll just go on to Reddit and uh, see where it takes me. I mean, the content is really just given to you. It's not that hard to come up with. And so if you're the type of channel that has to come up with a new idea for every single video, then it's really difficult to keep it interesting and keep it entertaining and keep coming up with good ideas over and over again. You know, another good thing about a series is that it really puts you into the right mindset. You know, you've done this type of video before, you already know what you're doing. So one good example I would come up with for this type of thing is uh, iDubs. Now, iDubs used to be huge. You know, he had his Kickstarter crap, his bad unboxing, and his content cop. You know, all three really strong series. And so he made lots of videos for all of these series. But then eventually it seemed like he just kind of got tired of it or felt like it was getting repetitive, so he just kind of stopped doing that. And these days, it doesn't seem like even he knows what his channel is about. It's kind of just random videos here and there. I wouldn't really say his channel is dead, but he doesn't really upload very often anymore. Now we bring up the other point, like I said, is this the type of content where I can keep doing it without getting burnt out? Now this is the kind of thing that you run into a lot because, you know, there's a lot of money to be made on YouTube, obviously. And so you have a lot of people that jump into a type of content just because it's popular and just because they can make a lot of money. And then down the road after they've been doing it a while, especially if you start declining, they just start to lose more and more motivation and then they just don't want to do that anymore. You know, they get into the mindset of like, well, I don't really enjoy this, but I'm making a lot of money doing it, so I guess I'll keep doing it. But then as the money starts to disappear more and more over time, they're just like, all right, well, now I just, I'm really just done with that. I mean, that was kind of my situation when I did the Reddit videos. But now let's take a look at a bunch of different YouTubers who maybe aren't quite as big as they used to be, and try to explain why. So a big one right now that's going on would be uh, Gabby Hanna. Now this is one example of somebody who just kind of blows up really fast, and then doesn't really know how to handle being so big and then just kind of losing hope as your numbers start to go down. Now something you'll probably notice with a lot of big YouTubers is that when people have a lot of subscribers and their views are doing great, you know, they're really happy, they're talking about how grateful they are for everything, but then if you notice that their views start going down over time, they'll start making a lot more videos like, oh no, I don't, I don't know if I can do this anymore, like I'm just having mental health issues, like I'm having breakdowns, I'm burning out, I think I need to take a break. Like that kind of behavior very often correlates with dropping views. Because think of it from this perspective. When you first start off on YouTube, you know, you start very low, and you have to slowly work your way up. But you can see yourself improving. You work harder, your numbers keep going up, your views keep getting higher and higher, and so that's just kind of what you come to expect, is that the longer you do it, the more traction you'll gain, the more popularity you'll get, the higher your views will get. But then at a certain point, you keep putting in more effort, and you keep doing what you've always been doing, but then things start to go down. And so that's when a lot of people start to go a little bit crazy, I guess, because they've lost their consistency that they're so used to. Which, uh, just as a side note, if you ever start to make a lot of money on YouTube, or just online in general, uh, I would not recommend taking out loans for things, because you never know how long that income is going to last. Like, you could be making $50,000 a month for like a few months straight, and you think like, wow, at this rate I'll be making, you know, $6 million this year. So then you go and take a loan out on a $10 million house, and then the next month you're making 30,000, and then the next month you're making 10,000, and then the next month you're making 5,000, and then you're like, uh, crap, what do I do now? So yeah, I think most YouTubers can agree that uh, it's very unstable income a lot of the time. 
Now another few channels that are kind of similar to Gabby's but uh, not quite as drastic would be the Paul Brothers. Now obviously a few years ago the Paul Brothers were much more talked about, you know, they were always doing stupid stuff, just looking for attention, they were gaining millions of subscribers just non-stop. But today you don't really hear about them quite as much. And it's not necessarily that their channels are dying or that they're going down, but they've kind of flattened out. And that's just an example of you're growing for a while, but eventually the growth is going to stop at some point. And if you're lucky, you can keep a big portion of that audience that you gathered over time. But it can be pretty difficult to stay at that level. Now the next way you can really kill a channel is, of course, drama and controversies. <laughs> now this one can really go both ways, because it really depends on how you handle the controversy that comes your way. Now for example, remember the whole pro Jared thing that happened a little over a year ago? How everyone thought he was like the worst person in the world, and he was completely done for, he lost a big chunk of subscribers immediately. Well, he handled it about as well as you could have. He addressed a lot of the criticisms, he gave a defense. Now whether you agree with the defense or not, he, he regained a lot of subscribers from that, and then he just went back to his regular content, trying to just forget that it ever happened. Because the more you dwell on the controversies, the more drama it causes, and the more that drama goes on, it's usually not so great for your channel. But I looked at Pro Jared's profile today, and he seems to be doing just fine. He's uploading regularly again, and his views don't seem to be too bad. And then you have, like, beauty community levels of drama with James Charles, Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star, Tati. Now that's a big one that's going on right now. And it's kind of an unpredictable game right now, just about who's going down and who's coming out ahead from all of this. So let's look at Shane Dawson for a second. He didn't even necessarily do anything bad recently, but a bunch of his videos from years ago are now coming back to haunt him because apparently we're in peak cancel culture right now and people are just dying for an excuse to ruin somebody's life. I mean, I never cared for his content much anyway, but I do think it's pretty ridiculous that people are now going back and criticizing him for things that happened, you know, eight to ten years ago when it's like nobody cared much back when it happened, but everyone wants to show just how much better we are today. So they've got to erase all of history that offends them now. But I honestly don't really think that Shane's channel is going anywhere unless he really wants it to. Because the longer it takes for your channel to grow to where it's at, I think it can also add more security and make it take longer to die too. Because you've had many loyal fans that have been around for 10 plus years. And usually those are the type of fans that aren't likely to just ditch a creator at the first sign of controversy. Now when I say that Shane's channel is not going to die unless he wants it to, that kind of brings us to the weird situation of Jenna Marbles right now. Now I know there's kind of a lot of speculation as to why she just came out and deleted a bunch of her videos and saying that she's quitting YouTube. A lot of people were saying that she's just kind of done with YouTube and she was looking for an excuse to get out of it. Some people say that she wants to cancel herself before the cancel culture can get to her. I mean, again, I think it's all just a bunch of stupid pointless drama and she probably would have been just fine uh, not doing that. But I guess, hey, if you want to leave YouTube, it's your choice. Now, while Jenna thinks she upset a lot of people with her past videos, I don't think that was really a major issue with her, like it is for the next person. And that would be Boogie2988. Now, we've all known Boogie for a long time. He's been through a lot of different phases over the last 10 years. I mean, there was like a whole hour-long documentary video just titled Why Boogie is Losing Subscribers, which got over 3 million views. Now in that case, Boogie just kind of changed his personality over the years, and a lot of people who thought they liked him just didn't really like where he was going with it, and so he's kind of just fizzled out more and more. And you can tell that he's really trying to salvage it. He's still uploading, he's still trying to do well, but it seems like the damage is already done, and he's having a really hard time bringing it back. But speaking of ruining a reputation, there seems to be some people who are just downright immune to being cancelled or having their channels die. One good example of that would be Keemstar. And Keemstar is Keemstar. We all know him, he can be kind of a jerk sometimes, he's kind of obnoxious. But I think that having a personality like that makes you much more immune to being cancelled. Because like, if you're a really nice guy, and everybody knows you as a nice guy, and then you do something just completely out of left field and you do something horrible, then everyone who has seen you as this perfect guy all this time, like, their view is completely shattered. And so you can lose a ton of fans like that. You know, basically like Boogie. But with Keemstar, it's kind of just expected that he's gonna act like he does. And so when there's some big controversy about him, everyone's just like, eh, well, I mean, that's just Keemstar. And with the whole recent thing with him versus H3, of course there were a lot of accusations thrown around, and he lost a bunch of subscribers, and he got into this big fight for maybe a week, but then he just kind of shrugs it off and he just moves on and goes back to his regular content. And his views don't seem to have suffered at all since then. 
He survived that controversy. He survived the content cop against him. I mean, if somebody attacks him, he just attacks back, has fun with it, and then just jumps right back into his regular content like it was nothing. Now, I've never been a huge fan of Keemstar, but I do have to admire his ability to just come back from controversy like that. But moving away from regular controversy, there's another channel that had a very interesting way of dying. And that is, Leafy is here. Now, if you never watched the Amp Lemon video about Leafy is here, I definitely recommend checking it out. It has a lot of really interesting points. Now, Leafy wasn't killed by cancel culture. He didn't have a mental breakdown or anything like that. Leafy's channel was basically killed by YouTube itself. Now, Leafy has always made really edgy content, and he's been really popular doing so. He was up to 5 million subscribers for a long time just making fun of people, just basically just bullying people on the internet. And the people over at YouTube saw that, and they were basically like, uh... Yeah, I don't think that it's a very good thing for this site that this guy is doing so well. So they basically just shadow banned his content. They stopped recommending his videos to almost anybody. They literally just suppressed a lot of his views and just kept his channel down. And eventually he was just like, eh, what's the point? Though he has made a comeback recently, so it's been pretty interesting that he's actually getting a decent amount of views after coming back after such a long break. Okay, so we've covered cancel culture and mental breakdowns and drama and all that stuff, but we haven't even talked about content shifting. So when I mentioned the whole thing about YouTubers just running out of ideas and having their channel just kind of fizzle out because they just don't know what they're doing anymore, another direction that they can take is to shift content into some new category. And this can be an extremely risky thing to do to your channel. Now it can either revive it and bring a lot of people back and have your channel succeed again, or it can completely kill your channel. So I've actually heard once from people over at YouTube that if you are planning on changing your content to a completely different style and a different category, it's usually better to just start a brand new channel from scratch than to try and take an existing channel and change it. And the reason for that is because of how the YouTube algorithm works. So when you upload a video to your channel, it usually gets recommended to your most dedicated fans first. And then when those people click on it, then it'll get recommended to more of your fans. And when those people click on it, then it'll recommend it to even more people. And so if it's a really good video, then it'll just keep snowballing and getting bigger and go viral. However, if you upload a very specific type of content to your channel, and you have a lot of people that watch just for that type of content, and then you try and upload a completely different type of content, a lot of your existing followers probably are not going to click on that new type of content. So what you end up having is your click-through rate just falls through the floor. So like you might have a 10 to 15% click-through rate with your regular videos, you know, your fans want to watch the videos you put out, but then you upload a different type of video, and now you have a 1% click-through rate. Barely any of your fans are even clicking on it, meaning it's not recommending it to anyone past that fan base, and so the people you're trying to reach aren't ever even going to see it recommended. Now what it really comes down to is, are people watching your content to see you, or are they watching you for your content? Now what I mean by that is, are people watching my Reddit videos because they like me, or just because they want to watch Reddit videos? Well, you figure that out pretty quickly when you stop making Reddit videos, you start making other things, and then everyone stops watching you because they were there for the content, not for the creator. Which can be a lot different if you're like a major channel like PewDiePie who can just upload pretty much anything and people will still watch it. And if you couldn't tell, uh, I'm speaking from experience here. So there's just a few ways to kill a YouTube channel. Uh, I'm sure most of the people I talked about aren't gone for good. A lot of them will make a comeback, and a lot of them will do just fine in the end. But it is just kind of an interesting atmosphere on YouTube that you have so many just regular people who gain so much fame and fortune out of nowhere, and when it happens so fast, you don't really know how to handle it. And, that, and so I think that's why a lot of people tend to go mentally unstable, or they just have breakdowns, or they just can't handle all the attention, and they don't know how to maintain the audience. So if you're a YouTuber, or you want to be one, learn from other people's mistakes and try to not fall down the path that they did. So I also wanted to finish off the video thanking all of the people who signed up to my Patreon. Uh, I know I've kind of moved past the whole word list thing with my videos, but the, the monetization testing is still going. Uh, I am giving exclusive monetization help to my patrons, and I'm still updating the word list regularly. So if you're ever having monetization issues, maybe sign up and we can talk.